In this video, we are going to see 10 rules of good data, actually 11. But let's start with the first one. The idea is simple. All the data should be in columns and each column should have a heading. Quite simple, but very often it gets complex. So here I have a dual heading. One layer is for year, another layer is for month. That's a bad idea. Ideally, we should have it like this, year, month, region, amount. Now it can grow. Even this is suboptimal. Year and month can be derived from a date. So you could have a single column containing date from which we could derive the year and month. But for now, year separate, month separate, region, amount. This is good. Obviously, we want to convert data to tables and analyze it. So every column needs to have a heading. Even if you have a blank heading and then you convert the data to table, it will automatically put some default heading which you can change. If there are duplicate headings, that's not allowed. For example, here we have heading in two cells in the first place. That's a bad idea. Now if I create a table, purchase is the header, expiry is the header and the second row became date. That doesn't make sense. So if you combine it, it will become like this. This is fine. Another big problem which people don't understand, raw data is raw data. There is no need for merge cells and the moment you have merge cells, it creates problems because invariably you will have multiple layers of headings and we already saw the problem. Many people insist on having merge cells, but wait. Before you say, I desperately need merge cells, think you need to look at merge cells. That means you need them in the output or the report or the MIS, whatever. Raw data is not supposed to be looked at. Raw data is supposed to be used to create something which is worth looking at and interpreting, which is the output. So yes, output merge cells, fine. Input merge cells does not have a justification. So if this is what you got, there's a wrong format. The correct format is something like this, product, region, amount, discount. Now from here, you can create a pivot table, which will give you the correct type of merge cells exactly the way you want in the output. Sometimes for headings, we just drag it like this. This is a bad idea because when you convert it to table, it's going to use the column names in formulas. So if the name itself has a formula, it doesn't work. So if you convert it to a table, make sure these are actual values, not formulas. Fine. This is another common problem. One column should have one meaning. Makes sense. But very often we have multiple mixed meanings. Now, if I want total for one sector, for example, business, it's going to be difficult. So the correct way is one column, one meaning, second column, second meaning, and then we can do any kind of analysis in a flexible manner. Another variation of this specifically is one type. One meaning is different thing. One type is different thing. Here the meaning seems to be correct. This is FY19, this is FY20, so this is the year component, this is the month component. From a meaning point of view, there does not appear to be a problem, but there is a type problem. This is text, this is blank. Blank does not mean text. So, as a human being, I understand this cell refers to Jan and this one is Feb and this is FY20. But for Excel, this is blank, this is blank, this is blank. That's where analysis is going to get confusing. So all these blank cells will merge together, which doesn't make sense. So that is why no blank cells. It should have correct values. Now, of course, there is data. This is amount. There can be a blank cell there because there is a meaning. That meaning means either that amount was zero or I am waiting for that amount to come in or I don't know. But here, I don't want to copy that 68 there, whereas here, I did want to copy that Feb down. All right. 
Now, one corollary to this, very often this kind of gaps come as a result of copy pasting from pivot tables. If that is the case, you are in luck. Why? Because pivot table is capable of filling the gaps and do that before you copy paste. How do you do that? Big problem, menu on top, look at the groups. Yes, this is a layout problem. Is a pivot, ties, pivot table style? No, no, these are visual. Here, are we changing subtotal? No, grand total? No, report layout. Look at all the options. Think, these are called item labels. So the column is called field. Things under the column or inside the column are called items and the actual things are called item labels. So one click and you get the job done. Why are they called item labels? So this is a field, these are items, but they are called item labels for a reason. Why? Because these labels can be changed without changing the underlying data. So if I change it here, this is a pivot table, remember. So it's going to change it everywhere. That's why they are called item labels. Let's proceed further. Eighth problem. This is subtotals, raw data. Is raw data. Whatever totaling you want to do, you do it in the output report. No subtotals, no unnecessary blank rows anywhere. For example, here we have many problems. There are, this is all text, but interrupted by a subtotal. Now, even if we get rid of the subtotals, the problems are not over. In this example, we have multiple problems. Another problem, now they are all text, same type, no, because there is indentation. So this is the main level. This is the second level. This is the third level. So actually there are three different meanings here. Another problem, are these headings or data? They are sitting in the place where heading should be, but actually these are data. This is data, this is data. The column heading should have been month. And because of all this, there are still empty rows. So the correct format for this, for input, is this. Yes, there is a lot of repetition, understood. But don't worry. The input data is not supposed to look good. There will be repetition and that's the correct thing to have. And the purpose of input data is not to look good, to make it easy to convert it to analytical output, which is quick to create. That's the purpose of good input data. Here is another very common mistake. We have some formatting. Now, who knows what this formatting is? Maybe the person who added? Obviously. No, not obvious. Because even if I added this, six months later, I'm not going to remember what that yellow meant. So even the person who added may not be aware of what that formatting means. So that's called formatting instead of meaning. Even if you know what that yellow and red means, can you get a total of yellow? No, you can't. So you can't analyze based on formatting. You can't understand based on formatting. That's why whatever you're trying to convey by putting a specific format deserves to have its own column. So that's the rule. Whatever that red, yellow, you can put later as conditional formatting. But base data must contain the actual content or meaning. Another very common one. This is an example of a muster or attendance record. What is happening here? The first column is OK. Header, data. Second column onward, the same problem which we saw earlier. These are not column headings in the true sense of the word heading. This is data sitting in the place where heading should be. So what is the idea? Simple, employee ID, date, status. Now, what is the difference? If this was the format, every new day or date, you're going to add a column. So that data is growing horizontally. That's the problem. But what we want is data should grow vertically. And that is achieved here. You can have any number of employees, any number of days. It is just going to grow vertically. Unless you want another meaning, which is another column. Now that we have all the 10 rules clearly delineated, we have checked. Yes, this is true. This is true. This is true. All 10 are good. And now data is really clean. Now, why should there be another rule 11th? Because 
in many cases what you get is multiple pieces of data. Now the 11th rule is assuming you have data which is clean as per our 10 rules but you get that data in multiple pieces. As an example, I have shown you clean data, product month amount, but it came from four different people in four different regions, north, south, east, west. Individual piece of data is clean. Individual people sent it to me properly, but when I got it, I got multiple pieces and the natural tendency is to keep them as multiple pieces. Usually, you will not put them on the same sheet, you will put it in separate sheets, north, east, south, west, or you will put it in a separate files also because they came as separate attachments and that's the problem. Is this data related? Yes. Then it should remain in one block or one table, not four tables or not four sheets or not four files. How do you do that? Very simple. Let it come in pieces because individual person is sending you piece, they have only that much. But when you get it, you know it's all related. So you get the data copy paste copy paste below each other and before you lose touch as to which region it came from quickly add that name of that block of data which was the source in this case region as a column so remember whatever you would otherwise have put as file names or sheet names deserve to be a column name so that's the 11th commandment when you have clean data related multiple pieces put them together and whatever is the differentiator, put that as a column. So that is how these 11 rules of clean data are extremely useful in making sure that your inputs are in good order. And once that is done, analysis becomes extremely easy. Now, in each case, I have shown you the problem and I have shown you the intended format. How to clean it clearly, I have not shown. For that, you need to learn Power Query which we'll learn some other time, but you have data, get external data, and here you can import data from various sources and clean it up in a very effective manner, which is better than doing it manually, better than doing using formulas, and definitely better than doing it using macros. So that's it for now. Thank you.